Yo. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the fifth part of the Deviant Art Iceberg by Nora. Let's jump right into it. But first, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Now, I know you've heard of it, but what is it all really about? Well, let me be your tour guide to all things Raid. Raid Shadow Legends has over 700 plus unique champions to collect, each with their own special skills and abilities, ensuring that you'll find one, if not many, that you'll love. Being that I'm Dylan the Night Owl, I do just so happen to have a bit of a thing for knights. And one of my personal favorite champions is Ashwalker, though Drexthar is pretty dang cool too. There are 15 awesome factions, from lizardmen, orcs, and dwarves, to the undead, elves, and mystical skinwalker shamans. Raid's got a faction just for you. There are 12 imposing dungeons to conquer, and containing a vicious boss that'll take all your tactical skill to the feet. And hey, do you want a free legendary champion? Pretty silly question, I know. Of course you do, especially when they're as cool as this. Check out Sun Wukong, Raid's take on the mischievous Monkey King, coming as a free legendary champion. All you've got to do is log into Raid on seven different days between August 22nd and October 23rd, and you'll get your hands on this awesome champion. With all this exciting stuff and more coming to Raid, if you haven't started playing yet, then well, what the heck are you waiting for, man? And hey, for new players out there, only now you have the chance to get one of the best epic champions, Stag Knight, as well as a skin for him designed by John Tron himself. Just use the promo code JTSKIN before October 7th. Also, if you click the link or scan the QR code right here, you can get a free starter pack with this cool in-game loot. So with all that said, just hit my link in the description and I'll see you all on the battlefield. Thank you once again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Now we are truly and completely lost. The walls shifting and contracting, ever changing are these halls. A labyrinth of art, of minds and souls. The layout is now perfectly keeping us prisoner. Well, if we meant to leave, of course. But you and I aren't looking to leave, are we? No, you wanna see the darkest depths of this place see what lays at its innermost center. That morbid curiosity is just too strong, eh? Well, I'm not one to judge, and we've already come so far. We might as well see it to its natural conclusion. So with that, let's explore further on. Our journey is almost at its end. Manda T. To start this tier off, first we have quite the bizarre character. Real name Amanda Turkoll, and now seemingly named Amari Strawberry93 on their most current account, and they were also once called Lady Alt69 back in the day, Manda T is an active member in the self ship community. While not exactly noteworthy in just that, She's most infamous for the extent to which she takes it, and the extremely specific character she's fallen head over heels over. Have you guys ever heard of this little game series called Spyro the Dragon? It's uh, pretty fucking cool, pretty based, if I'm uh, being uh, perfectly honest. But that's really besides the point. Did you see, in Spyro the Dragon, specifically Spyro the Dragon 1, the original, 
there were these boss characters that you encounter across your journey. And the last one that you happen to face before you would end up going to the final home world to fight the game's main villain, Nasty Nork, you would end up having to face off against this boss character named Jacques, who, um, looks like this. He's this weird green goblin jack-in-the-box guy who throws boxes at you. And I'm sure that your natural reaction, regardless of your uh, specifications, uh, your, your sex or whatever, is that uh, this guy right here is pretty smoking hot. And if that is a thought that uh, went through your mind, well, Amanda just so happens to agree with you and is in fact deeply in love with Jacques. Yes, you heard that correctly. This person is sexually attracted to a Spyro the Dragon character that fucking almost nobody remembers. This jack-in-the-box goblin looking ass guy has completely ravaged the mind of this DA user in ways that can be seen in quite uh, vivid and some may say disturbing detail. Uh, I would be one of those people. It, it, it's quite disturbing. Now back in the day, this individual would draw pictures of themselves paired up with their little green jack-in-the-box fella. Pictures of themselves in sexy poses or outright being naked and uh, porn of Jacques and herself in various poses and situations. Back in the day, this was what her introduction to her DA page once said. Quote, I am 19 years old, just graduated high school from 2011. I want to get somewhere with my art, but to a lot of people think it's a competition out there. I am in a sexual love relationship with a French jack-in-the-box from Spiral the Dragon named Jacques. I'm guessing I'll add my porn on here. Hmm, I guess I will, lol, XD. Just a fucked up fangirl on the loose, unquote. In another quote, they explain why exactly they love Jacques so very much. Quote, why do I love Jacques? Well, he's unique as hell. He's got a look that. He really has a sexy feel of color. He's like the most badass jack off the box he is. He brought me back into playing Spyro again all because of one picture on DA. I don't have a boyfriend yet, but it depends since I'm actually blooming as a prettier flower. His environment is all colors and beauty, though the graphics is messed up from back in the day, but I still love it. So far, so good." Unquote. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I hope that was illuminating to you all. But see, here's the thing. I've shown you a few pictures of them and their lover, but I'm afraid I couldn't even begin to show you the absolute fucking depths of this woman's content. There is so much porn of her and Jacques, like unbelievable amount of it. And even worse, there is a ton of pictures of this extremely interesting individual Buck ass naked with everything exposed. I uh, I have no words for the horrors I have had to see for this iceberg. But uh, I suppose this is where I'm at in my life at this point. So uh, be thankful that this is my weight to carry so that you don't have to. But at any rate, this individual for all these reasons and more eventually did catch the attention of several trolls and ED in particular. And Manda certainly did not take the uh, newfound criticism and mockery very well. Quote, What I think of trolls and bullies online. They say I bully people because one group of girls are skinny. Well, I'm just jealous of them getting more attention at the time. Now, Chris Chan, I wished him death because people tell me I am him, and it lowers my self-esteem a lot. And now I got more problems at home in real life. I might now talk to you guys again, and god damn it, I have an addiction to the internet I'm so sick of. Anyways, what the subject I'd like to talk of are the trolls and bullies. Gosh, you can't believe it. Trolls and bullies are disgusting creatures that 
never gives a fuck about what's on the other side of the screen. All they think is that the person they harass and bully are bots with mmm. If the person caused suicide due to this, I think we need a law to keep out emotionally unstable people. If I had a kid going to junior high school, I would not allow my child to go online at school and go through the same boat as me and Chris Chan did. Since I feel I cannot stand people's idea of being human, to them it's to be rude and careless towards people and their feelings. This is why we have shootings most of the time. People with mental problems get bullied and nothing gets done and no discipline. We need to bring beating kids back so we can straighten their goddamn attitude before it's too late. Beating with a regular belt is fine, and I don't give a damn if you think it's inhumane. I think people need to stop having their kids being snotty and become future trolls and bullies. The free speech thing I don't think I like all of you so I'd shut up about intelligence because it's a major issue for society and bullies. Bullies and trolls are not smart either because all they do is lull at someone's mentality and think it feels good. Okay, let's look at their weaknesses. Computers. Take that away and see how they feel about it when it comes to a, a person breaking and stealing it. They be all crybaby about it. If you do troll or bully, would you like your laptop or desktop taken or broken? If no, that is your weakness right there. Anyways, that is my thoughts for today, and hopefully things will get better." Unquote. They would then end up going bonkers on the ED article made about them, and would go on several rants and tirades on both DA and their fur affinity page which resulted in many of their closest friends and fan base that they surprisingly had built up over time coming to their defense, until even they began to tell them that they should just ignore all of this, which they, uh, didn't end up doing. This would go so far that YouTuber and famous online critic of the time, Blackbuster Critic, would make a reaction video to their content, making fun of them and their general behavior. In response, this is what they had to say about it. Quote, Well, hello, DA. What has been happening lately is, hmm, let me say, people have been linking me to this bitchy, hmm, who is on YouTube now twice. I have the right to complain of this. Since it's getting on my nerves, and sorry to say it like a racist, but making re reaction videos like that, making him a swagger, eh, that's a mmm, shit, I'm sorry. Don't complain to me on that, since you all call me and the others like me mmms, and it hurts. You love seeing the results of pain? Well, how about a best friend slash lover slash family member being cut with a knife and see how it feels to see your buddies suffer from pure pain? Want me out of the internet for good? Try and find ways to kick me out quickly, impatient fucks. You're smart enough, right? If you don't listen, I guess I'll report as trolling spam and such, I don't know. Also, by the way, here's a little message about me, in which you all don't give a shit anyways because you love others in pain and having so much fun making someone possible for yeah, so don't call me uh mm, over something I cannot fucking help. Being myself, not like most of the American population of being douchebags and whiny little brats like the popular girls. All they mostly do is catfight. Guys, in my view, catfight too. So keep it shut over the stupidest shit like boyfriend girlfriend reservations, cell phones, game systems, money in a very low amount. An example, an American quarter 25 cents, and other such. Calling someone a mmm is like calling a black man a mmm. An Asian a mmm. People from the Middle East, mmm, etc, etc. So, would you like it if I also call you a slut, a fat ass, a fuck, d bitch, idiot, and so on? 
then don't call me a hmm, and I'll try and keep that side of my feelings in as much as possible, unless you keep pushing me over the limit. This is thanks from the natural attention whore, unquote. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I could go on a while longer with their past, but I think you pretty much get the point by now. That being said, these days it seems that they are, uh, still doing the exact same thing that they were doing before. So, uh, yeah, I guess they're living out their life. I've heard that they're also making cuck art related to Jacques now as well, so, uh, you know, that's a cool new development, I guess. I'm sure they also love the Reignited Trilogy and getting to see Jacques in glorious HD. But with all that said, let's go ahead and move on for now. Anthroplanes slash vehicles. Ah, now this is an interesting, strange thing indeed. This entry refers to a subgenre of artwork that, well, is about anthropomorphized planes and vehicles. Though planes seem to really be the most popular choice amongst these people, but there is still plenty of car-related art as well. Art of this variety can come in several shapes and sizes, but ultimately, these are usually made because the person finds planes sexually attractive. Have you ever just been playing Ace Combat 7 and looking at the back of that F-22 Raptor and thought to yourself, Holy shit, I wanna fuck the shit out of that thing. Well, this is essentially the mindset. And uh, as I looked further down this rabbit hole, I found that Anthroplanes were often connected directly to the furry fandom as well. Like, they are pretty much one and the same, as a matter of fact. I guess to be fair, they sort of are animal-like once you start adding expressions and bend and squash to them. Plus, both furries and these fellows both find it, uh, sexually gratifying to add human features onto things that you cannot or shouldn't attempt to mate with. It's all rather uh, bizarre, to say the least. There are also plain sonas like fursonas. And of course, just like many furries, this obsession with anthro characters usually doesn't stop just there. And you can find loads and loads of fetish art involving anthroplanes, including everybody's favorite, Vor. Yes, indeed. We are so fucking far down this rabbit hole that we are talking about anthroplane Vor art. There truly is no going back. And I am also extremely, extremely tired of looking at Vor art in general. I went from, well, live and let live, to I actively am hoping for your downfall. I think I could happily live the rest of my life without seeing another piece of Vor art. Shame. Shame upon you all, you crazed cannibalistic cretins. 2010 Christmas Hack. This entry is referring to when DA was hacked and up to 13 million user emails, usernames, and birth dates were compromised. The breach is believed to have occurred via the Silver Pop System Incorporated, a marketing company DeviantArt uses to communicate with its users through a mailing list. Forest Dweller Houses An older user of DA, John or Forest Dweller Houses, was a woodcarver who spent his final months posting beautiful carvings of bird homes. Sadly, however, on November 17th of 2015, John's wife announced his death from cancer, and thousands outpoured in support. Viewing his page now comes with a heavy heart, knowing this man knew he was going to die, but still stood strong and did what he loved. According to his wife, he died peacefully in his sleep, a fitting end for a man who just wanted to show the world his cute wood carvings. And yet another reminder to enjoy the little things in life. To create art. To impart beauty onto the world. Until the very end. Bonnie Cakes. Bonnie Cakes was a user who was most active in the Undertale fandom. With much of their art focusing on feet fetishism. The lower quality of the art, coupled with it being Undertale characters, most of the time meant their art was a constant target for ridicule. However, it seems like their account is deleted now, and nearly all evidence of their existence has been wiped clean besides this video by Deviant Cringe talking about the user. 
Okay, everyone, so here uh, he is. Here is uh, Bonnie Cakes. Don't forget the cheese, a digital art hobbyist. Uh, Johnny Powers, a male from the United States, and he's been on DA for two years, and he's even got his own little group. And uh, as you can see uh, right from this little preview right here, yeah, uh, it basically is what it sounds like. Plant foot fetish. So, uh, before we get into that, let's uh, read his uh, DA ID a little bit. It's, uh, I bet it's gonna be fun. Read this, please. Hello, I am a foot fetish artist. If you don't like what you see, you should probably leave. Well, uh, what if I decide to stay? I'm also open for role-playing, so feel free to drop me a note. Foot fetish RP rules. I don't allow feet to... Uh, licking, smelling dirty feet, or toe sucking. Sometimes I will, but don't count on it. Oh yeah, uh... If you want those things, you better pray that, uh, that he uh, thinks it is uh, adequate. Let's God, their commentary was so bad. But yeah, that's pretty much all that there is to this one. If they were still around, I might look a little bit further, but it seems like they have uh, deleted their account and moved on with their life. Diaper Transformation An obscenely obscure fetish, this one involves a person wishing to be transformed into a diaper. I can't really show any pictures related to this one, but the concept is they want to be turned into a diaper so that they can be used. You know, shit and pissed in. Though I think an even darker angle of this fetish is the fact that diapers are always used for babies, and thus they want to be used by an infant and close to them in a... Yeah, I think you uh, catch my drift on why this is really fucking creepy. Yet another disgusting and strange fetish. Cacobard. Real name Kebel Garsavian. Sorry if I uh, mispronounced that. Even with the language barrier and small audience, was immensely active in many Brazilian groups on DeviantArt, as well as founding one of the most popular Brazilian groups on DA, Forum du Blonet. Sadly, however, on April 4th of 2015, Cacao would pass away from ammonia, and his forums slash groups still stand to this day. Jerryman 19 Being active in fandoms like Powerpuff Girls, Kids Next Door, and My Hero Academia, Jerryman, real name Jerryman Diallo, was a modestly popular artist based in the Philippines, who also had a small YouTube channel where she did speed paints. Tragically, however, she took her own life in 2017, and while the exact details are still unclear, eyewitnesses state that she was spotted on the fifth floor of a mega mall and jumped to her death. Her art is the only thing that remains now, and it's a real tragedy to see someone so talented throw their life away. Godzilla 713 Godzilla 713, while lesser known, still deserves a mention for the sheer amount of bondage art they've made of various cartoon women. And by sheer amount, I'm talking nearly 8,000 pieces like these done over the course of 14 years. Clearly, the man doesn't get tired of this trope or precise type of drawing. They are still very active to this day. Peyton the Rylu. Peyton is a strange user who's quite infamous for his various fetishes, be them Vore, diapers, and Pokemon. Often, all together, of course. As well as being quite homophobic, and well known for going out of their way to antagonize people. Sadly, most of this user stuff has been cast off the internet, with his DA account being deactivated and his Fur Affinity account being suspended. It's difficult to get the whole scope of this guy's antics, but there are a few screenshots from that time, which I'll quickly give a read so you can get a kind of taste of who this person was. Quote, Hello! Nice try, Miss Lesbian. Get off my fucking profile. Hoi! Hey, f guys. I saw your favorites and I see you like gays. So I'm blocking you because you're a disgusting, worthless f guy who will burn in hell. Unquote. There is also an old The Names Junkie video on the guy which showcases uh, much of the same stuff. Omega Rider 99 This is an obscure user who happens to have a strange obsession slash hatred of the Loud House cartoon. Which is pretty funny because most of these interesting individuals seem to have some fucking crazy opinion or love for uh, the Loud House. They just cannot get enough of the Loud House, 
and they also seem to usually be somewhat attracted to these various cartoon kids. But uh, that's just an observation I've made over the years. At any rate, he also has these edits of Drew Pickles from the Rugrats as various Power Rangers villains uh, for some reason, so uh, yeah, that's neat I guess. Walter Ratley, A seemingly regular user, his profile seems normal on the surface. With one glance at his favorites shows a wealth of commissioned foot fetish art. There is a treasure trove of uh, foot fetish art he's commissioned or commented on under his favorites, and he seems to have a particular interest in Coco Bandicoot's feet from the Crash Bandicoot franchise I've noticed. But he's also not picky. If the shoe fits, he'll be sure to make some quite enlightening comments such as these. Quote, Ooh, mmm, yeah, my love horny wet foot fetish and slow jack off to Rouge's light tan soles. Much love it. My favorite love sexy Coco's tan soles. It's beautiful. Heart emoji. Mmm, my lovely sexy horny wet foot fetish on Honey's light tan soles. Be very shine, beautiful it, heart and kiss emojis. Hearts and eyes emoji, hearts emoji, fucking wet emoji, thumbs up emoji, feet emoji, 100% emoji. Shocked emoji. Damn. Fuck. My lovely, horny, hot, sexy Jane reads 10 souls, very beautiful, much love it, I will. Want to see more new pics. A Jane reads tan souls soon. Heart emoji. Mmm, smiley emoji. Wow. Damn, very sexy Sally. Slight and souls. Beautiful it. In love emoji. <laughs> so, uh, he um, definitely has some choice words for the topic. But then when I decided to actually take a peek at this guy's gallery to see what wonders he himself had created, I started to notice an interesting pattern. Can you, uh, tell what it is yet? Ah, uh, yes, why, he's a certified communist. You know, the thing that you guys totally think aren't nearly as bad as, uh, Nazis, despite them also mass genociding people, including Jewish people, might I add. But nah, nah, I get what you mean. This guy, he's different. He's got a plan, you see. He's a man of history. When he reads books about how everyone historically starved under communist rule, he didn't even try to deny it. He embraced it. It's all part of his big brain plan, you see. If people can't eat, then desperate measures need to be taken for people to be able to survive. Such as eating things that they don't normally eat. And what's one of the first things they're more than likely historically to begin eating? That's right their shoes. That's the goal of the 10 year plan. And then he'll get to see all the feet he could ever possibly want. Truly a mastermind worthy of your admiration. Rafe 15. Rafe is a user who has become a lol cow due to his rather crude mummifications slash bondage art, which you can see here and has a rather interesting description to go with it that I, uh, suppose I'll go ahead and give a read. Forever real, tied up Basil, fully permanently delithicized, full permanent Bologna head, and a full permanent Bologna body, with two permanent Bologna feet, a permanent pastrami nose, and a permanent Bologna ham and cream cheese tongue, two permanent ham lips, and a mixture of tomato, pizza, barbecue, and taco sauce running through permanent Bologna veins to all permanent Bologna organs and permanent Bologna incise as foreveril tied up basil blood type, fully wrapped, all foreveril tied up all over from fully deliticized head to fully deliticized foot rope mummification leaving only head and feet visible through bondage. The front view of Forever Old Tied Up T-Bone, smiling wide open permanent Bologna mouth, happily showing his huge thick permanent Bologna, 
ham and cheese tongue. Next image of Forever Real Tied Up T-Bone. Forever Real Tied Up Justin, fully wrapped, tied up, rope mummified, covered in permanent rubbery rope, bondage, also fully deleticized completely from head to foot, fully permanent bologna head covered in brown fur with a full permanent bologna mouth and two ham lips, fully permanent living bologna body with full permanent bologna organs and bologna inside, fully permanent bologna legs with full permanent bologna feet and permanent bologna ham and cream cheese tongue and forever real tied up, Justin is enjoying it being this way and wants to stay this way and remain this way for him so he can have fun. Of course he is gonna get this way since this is permanent." Unquote. Uh, I uh, uh, I don't actually know what the fuck I just read. Comment down below if you have a translation, uh, I, I, I got the idea that they are permanently turned to Bologna. It doesn't really look like they've been turned into that, though, from the pictures? I, I, I don't- I guess it's like a totally different fetish. So, maybe even one that's so hyper-specific that only he has it, maybe? I, I don't know. Now, among his many posts, he also has uploaded what is by far one of the funniest pictures paired with a title that I have ever seen. <laughs> the, uh... Description of this fine bit of photography reads a photo of me laying down being bored as I am so bored most of the time Doesn't matter if I am at work or at home I tend to be so damn bored and I can't get over being bored Why because my life is boring is boring as hell how lame is that a bored 26 year old human boy child unquote now, it would seem that people eventually found his extremely strange pictures with the odd and nonsensical descriptions in them, and he would later respond quite harshly to uh, say the least. Quote, I don't understand this. It seems the stuff I have on here being looked at a lot is the stuff on here that means absolutely at all and actually wondering if I should have even posted. The bondage stuff and the petrification is something I want to known for. That just random stuff that means. I did that stuff at a time when I was really angry. Not that I am not angry now. <laughs> but to criticize me and demean me over something that doesn't mean anything. That is just BS. If you don't like like or if you hate something, the simple thing to do is not respond. Why not respond on the other stuff, as in the art I actually have worked, the stuff I have been trying to improve on, and better rather than what I put on here because of a certain way I feeling. Plus, just because I posted bondage doesn't mean that something I usually do, and it doesn't mean I like being tied up, who would enjoy. I don't know anybody whom would enjoy being in handcuffs and taken off to prison, even though that has never happened to me, doesn't mean I want it. My main interests are the military and weaponry. I have been also a number of fantasy and anthropomorphic stuff. Why not respond to that instead, instead of the body tissue transformations and bondage? That doesn't really have any meaning for me anymore. That was a short period back in my high school years when I was extremely upset because of the issues and problems I had back then. Why not respond on the Australian native images? That's what I do a lot. I wish I had the skill and talent that many other artists on here and abroad have, but I don't. I don't need BS from people who honestly say things like pinching girls and everyone else on the ass on the time. People who actually I feel just came on here to criticize the hell out of me. Which I don't appreciate, unquote. Unbelievably atrocious grammar and general sentences aside, yeah. Remember kids, if you don't want to be remembered online for something, especially if it's extremely weird, then don't post that very thing online. And especially also do not keep it posted on your fucking profile. Seems like a simple piece of advice, and yet so many don't seem to understand this. But, oh well.
UTTP. This is definitely a relic of its time, but the YouTube Troll Police, or shortened to the UTTP, is a group of trolls infamous for raiding various communities on Twitter, for affinity, and yes, even DeviantArt. They also made videos around these operations to uh, kill fandoms and harass random people, with this being an example of one. Now from what I've gathered, the ringleader of this stupid gang of cringe is a guy by the name of Tommy Parker, who started all this to, uh, I, I, I don't really know to be honest. I guess it was just for the lulls, it was just kind of because it was, you know, funny, just kind of trolling people, I mean, yeah. They also seem to be deeply connected with the Go Animate scene on YouTube, which is kind of its own rabbit hole, but again, they were easy targets for them. There is also just tons of obscure videos talking about being a part of or being anti-UTTP. But I'll be honest with you guys, this shit is so dumb that I can't really be bothered looking that much deeper into it than this. You pretty much get the point. It was a bunch of trolls that were like attacking people and making kind of stupid videos connected to it. And all of it was pretty obscure and it never really hit any kind of real impact whatsoever. It's a bunch of people LARPing on social media platforms and being edgy, and there really isn't much more to it than that. Buzzly Art Out of all the alternatives to DeviantArt, probably none have fallen as hard as Buzzly, and it seems to be a rather untold story, especially because I had never even heard of this site until reading about it via this iceberg entry. So, let's dive into it. According to a Reddit post via r slash internet drama, quote, So basically, there was this new art site called Buzzly Art, branded as Made By and For Artists. It's effectively a clone of 2014 DeviantArt, and was slash still is in beta currently. But it started to pick up quite fast over time. Plenty of people who wanted new, more active gallery type sites to post their art had begun migrating. However, roughly in late January to early February, the site had closed off registration indefinitely. Things were slightly shaky in the beginning, and there were some decisions made and things done that caused some drama. The first somewhat well-known one was when a user had made a slightly suggestive joke about someone's artwork, and staff had basically told them that was inappropriate. To most people, it seemed strange and and over the top on the staff's part. Others had also reported that they had been given strikes over seemingly trivial things. But for the most part, this was not a huge issue for everyone. More so, those who had migrated from other websites. Another later on was the staff's decision to ban content that involved incest, which apparently was a problem earlier on. This caused multiple people with varying opinions to chime in. Supposedly, the official Discord got nuked some time after this. Staff had claimed it was so that they could focus on the site more. However, some people believed it was to erase backlash. There were also some other things brought up, like how staff was slow to ban Nazi imagery posted on the site, as well as one of the devs being supportive of crypto and NFTs. But none of this was yet cause of any actual uproar among community members. Where shit hit the fan. On March 14th, one of the devs put out a poll about a community moral compass. The options on the poll were strangely worded, and some felt that they had been phrased in such a manner in order to elicit a reaction. Which they did. Because of this, naturally, a lot of people were left confused and pissed off. The members would attempt to confront the staff members about this. However, most seemed hesitant to reply immediately. A staff member would then rush to Twitter and tweet about the poll, promising a Google Doc on the matter later on. As they promised, the same staff member would then post a statement inside a Google document on Twitter about the whole situation, and an explanation on why the poll was the way it was. Now, what this ultimately amounted to was two of the staff members known as Chris and Pokemutt were the ones to blame, though a majority of people put emphasis on Chris for the poll. 
Effectively, Chris had thrown away any criticism other staff members had given to the poll he had made and posted it anyway, for some reason. To add insult to injury, some people dug up more info about Pokemutt's past and found details which had suggested that Pokemutt was a pedophile. Pokemon would then eventually have uh, his mod perms stripped and account removed, as well as a nuking of his Twitter and DeviantArt account. Three other staff members would then quit, but would have their accounts still listed as developers. Though later on, Nim's account would also disappear. This resulted in both Chris and Pokemon's pages, before he left, to be spammed with angry comments, copypastas, and general bullshittery. People also began leaving en masse, and would spam the main page with memes, statements, and farewells, as well as porn and gore. They'd also post images advising others to delete or replace their artwork files with different images, so that they could not be minted as NFTs. It really is hard trying to figure out what the motive Chris had for shitting the website up, but from what some have speculated, he did so for purposes of promoting crypto slash NFTs, which as mentioned earlier is something he supports, though really this is just a rumor, as well as filtering out users he didn't want using the poll. TLDR, newish seemingly promising art site gets launched, people get distrustful due to repetitive sketchy behavior of certain staff members, all hell breaks loose when terribly written poll gets put out and people leave the site due to being fed up with staff unprofessionalism." Unquote. So yeah, that's the story of Bosley Art in a nutshell. It would seem that truly, while DA is full of some of the most stupid and crazy people around, as well as general degeneracy, we must remember that these things are certainly not exclusive to the site, as the same can clearly be found truly anywhere and everywhere on the internet. Bonus Entry Sheezy Slash Sheezy Art Speaking of DA alternatives, this one is a classic, but not really a true alternative. See, back in the day when I was a team perusing around DeviantArt, destroying my young mind, I remember several people would say on the forums and other such places that, man, DeviantArt is overrated. Sheezy is where it's at. It's got a better community. And I always wondered if that was true. That's when I looked up the site and saw that it was a site made for furry artists, and uh, I never really looked back to be honest. But I do think it's interesting to look at it now, since it was so often brought up back in the day, and is a part of uh, artist history that I don't really see people talking about these days. According to Wikifur, quote, Sheezy Art, also known as Sheezy, was an online art site devoted to all types of media, including traditional, digital, photography, writing, pixel art, and animation. It originally operated from 2003 to 2013, and it was later revived by a former user in 2021 as Sheezy Art. But the revival ended up being short-lived. The servers for the revived site closed down in 2022, and its community will continue to live on as a Discord server. Sheezy Art's visual template is based on the same used at the DeviantArt Art Gallery, and as so, allows user commentary on the artwork, journals, and user pages. Sheezy Art, like DeviantArt, offered a set of forums in which the community could gather. Works containing explicitly adult material slash subject matter was forbidden. Sheezy Art had a tolerance for harmless trolling and to some degree uh, was encouraged. Argumentative and aggressive behavior was often seen and tolerated, but outright aggression and harassment was usually reprimanded. Sheezy Art's old mascot was a raccoon named Dante, until it was removed in March of 2007 from the site. A channel cat officially stated that this was done because we felt he didn't represent the artist well. Dante was created by a former staff member, Venzi, a cosplayer and prop slash product designer. Later on a Sheezy Art Club, the Bring Back Dante Club, was created to preserve the memory of the former mascot." Unquote. And on the note of all adult content being banned, 
Quote, In January 2005, Sheezy Art banned all adult material, content on its archive, deleting all media tagged as adult, citing a new server host policy's restrictions on said content. Many adult artists expressed disbelief at the administrator's explanation, believing the new policies to be unfair and unnecessary at best, a form of intentional persecution at worst, with some leaving the site altogether. In its original incarnation, Shizu Art allowed all type of content, including adult media, in contrast to DeviantArt's content restrictions rules. This made it a popular archive for adult art and artists, including those in the furry fandom. During the site's 2005 adult art ban, some of these furry artists would migrate to such galleries as Fur Affinity and Y Explanation Gallery, both of which were, at the time, furry friendly and without content restrictions. Unquote. Fur Affinity is still up and running to this day, of course. Full on min maxed on degeneracy and all, while Sheezy Art is a thing of the past, which I believe truly does say something about society. I'll let you consider what that something is, but uh, yeah. An interesting note in the online art and furry community, at the very least. Roderick Natas. Roderick features bizarre edits, most of which seem to hyperfixate on Nazis, but to the extent of it coming off a bit as a fetish. There's also a lot of bondage art here as well that can be seen. They also seem to have a thing for a Batman, and it's just some very bizarre looking stuff, but uh, yeah, not much more to say on it than that. Creepshot slash Explanation Stalked Explanation Community. By far one of the most disturbing rabbit holes on DA, there exists entire groups of people running pages based exclusively around taking creepy and very compromising photos of women without their consent. One example that Nora was able to find was a user by the name of Username is Taken, who is often commenting under other such posts with links and alike to their own collections. What's most insidious is that there has been no coverage on this whatsoever, and with DA's implementation of subscriptions, you can hide this stuff from the prying public, or even sell outright malicious content without anyone knowing at all. User the Creepy Stalker 101 was another in the community and had this as their profile header. Hi, this girl I'm posting used to be a school bully. She was mean and sort of rough around the edges. So as payback, I'm posting her selfies and her creep shots. And on his page appeared to be hundreds of photos of this girl, some of which could be considered a sort of revenge porn. Most of their profiles also had some variation of the tag explanation stalked explanation on their profile. Now that being said, uh, both of these profiles have since been taken down and I really don't want to show a bunch of pictures of women on DA collected by these creeps or anyone else. Since again, it is completely non-consensual and is... Uh, well, kind of giving them what they want if you showcase the pictures. But it's certainly not at all difficult to find on the site, and is one of the far more creepy and at times outright evil underbellies of the site in general. Gamera 1985 Gamera definitely takes the cake for weird amalgamations of multiple fetishes, showcasing combinations of pregnancy, conjoined twins, missing limbs, and even fusion to rather unsettling results. Some of their older pieces, like this of a lion girl or this uh, nine-tailed fox girl, showcase some interesting tastes in anatomy. But it was this piece, Ancient Orange Gift from 2006, that was the first image depicting the odd fetish art they would come to be known by and that they would continue making on into this day, to much more extreme levels. Themes of them being an avid enjoyer of crippled anime bitches can be seen here as well. Now as far as their newer art goes, I can't show you much because the vast majority of it is just straight up porn. But you can see here by some of these more recent pieces that they certainly evolved their art style and their extremes with the fetish, creating some extremely bizarre pictures to say the least. A very strange yet also very popular DA page. 
Bonus Entry, Doggy Saga, as suggested by Philemon. So I'm gonna be real, this entry is such a wild rabbit hole that I need to preface it with this. I'm just gonna show you stuff and talk in general terms about this individual because they kind of are hard to grasp. And what I mean by that specifically is they make a lot of really edgy, really crazy content but it also kind of feels like they're taking the piss most of the time. But also there's like 20 layers of irony and meta on top of everything that kind of makes it hard to fully know where they stand on anything. But there's going to be content where they're literally talking about being a Nazi and then also actively making fun of Nazis and people who associate with it. But to start, Doggy Saga is an individual who has been on DA, as well as a YouTube, and as well as a BitChute channel, and they also have a website, and generally speaking, create this very strange meta-humor ironic art, and post some wild fucking shit everywhere they go. Their original DeviantArt account was deleted quite some time ago, but uh, well, let's read the About Me. Quote, all my tumblers deleted because DDLG gang stalkers gave me a traumagenic system and interject alters of my abusers. Unquote. And here seems to be one of the last journals that they made on this old DeviantArt page, which reads as, quote, my wife and her son. They are my sunshine. My wife can sometimes identify as my husband when she puts on two dildos and two my sissy feminine dong and pooper, and then I eat the poop. My wife's son is a cool person, but he does not like poop. He will go for weeks without pooping. When he does poop though, the toilet gets blocked. I am made to eat poop by my wife's boyfriend because we do not have a toilet brush because she does not like to have plastic objects in the house." Unquote. So, uh, yeah. Here you can also see some of their art, of which I can't really show a ton of, but they have a lot of ironic political commentary to the best I can tell. Looking at their website, which I think is down these days, but was once up back in 2020, you can kind of see the wild and weird aesthetics that they have. And on their About Me section of the site, it says, quote, I am a pink dogkin, a white woman of color, and I have two autistic diagnoses. I am also a pro-pink dog nationalist against lizards and their anti-Zionism. My pro-pink dog nationalist husband, Mr. Doggy, is also against anti-Zionist lizards too. When I am not warning the world of evil globalist satanic pedophile lizards, I am thinking of more ways to expose the disgusting lizards. What this website is about. This website is about displaying Doggy Saga comics providing wiki information on Doggy Saga characters, their culture, lore, and concepts, as well as creating Doggy Saga games. The color of Doggy Saga dogs show different meanings as these animals come from a billion year old parallel universe. Lizards lurk in the shadows with the instinct to suck the life out of Earth and destroy all the plants they can. Farts are their only weakness. The website aims to be as interactive as possible, with lots of audio recordings that read out text for the blind, and text explaining what dog is which color for the colorblind. The website adds extra content without altering the original work." Unquote. Here you can find tons of art, comics, videos, and artistic projects of all kinds really. Again, some of which is too risque to show here on YouTube, but they are certainly very interesting, to say the least. Then we have the videos, which if you go to their current channel, you will see various rants from them on camera. And they go kind of something like this. The questioning bunnies will no longer be questioning the human rights abuses of forced drugging. Okay, so I'm really sick of being the only one who's really fucking doing any real protesting against the forced drugging. And um, I'm fucking sick of it sick of the mentally ill cowards who don't um, fight for their rights at all and they have literally uh, 
made it so the system is the way that it is that it's so easily able to continually for force drugs okay and I'm actually I've been using affirmations to cure myself and now I'm like I've been making significant um, breakthroughs with my affirmations and all I really have to say is you know fuck the mentally ill because um, <laughs> because um, you haven't done shit and I'm fucking done done I am now I don't usually address the lies told about me um, these days but you know what uh, this one thing really uh, grinds my gears <laughs> it's um <clears throat> when you're all fucking lie about uh you know how my husband uh told me and all that it's like um i stopped being a nazi and then he dumped me that's how it happened because i told him not to be a nazi anymore and i'm not gonna fucking do that and he um no, 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 stop being an answer. What's the good thing anyway that we're not together? Because I don't fucking like him. I never did. He's so fucking ugly. His dick hole's in the wrong place. He smells like shit. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, Go further back and you can see some animations and get a taste for their style of comedy. Hello, my little boy. Hey, Kyungi. Oh, hey, Stacy. Kyungi do e siji can. Fuck us, doof kyangi. Doof fuck us, hoodoi. Doof impossible, maloof. Domo ban many, watch if ben maui. Give me a bitch, fuck us, you dish. Go even further back, and you're gonna have to go to their bit shoot channel, in which you'll see there there are several episodes of a series that they called The Legendary Happy Chan, which, again, I'll just show a little bit of here. Watashiva Happy Chan, Watashiva 16 years old and a student of the Nazi Gaku. Yeah, now I could go far deeper, and honestly, this individual might be worth doing a Wandering the Web episode in the near future. But for now, I think you've at least gotten a taste of their stuff, and you now know where to look if you wish to go check out their stuff a more extensively. Bonus entry, Underwater Peril, suggested by Oop345. DA user and subscriber Oop345 suggested this weird rabbit hole of a fetish that usually goes by the name Underwater Peril. The concept of this fetish being around a cartoon or anime character drowning. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty much it. That's the fetish. Some examples of artists in this fetish scene include user Mega Go -Go Man, who you can see here actually classifies themselves as an aquaphile, and some of their art just shows anime women diving and swimming in the water happily, while others are much more grim, horrifying, etc. Jim Leisman and Ick De Hearns are some more examples of artists in the scene. The latter of which I cannot show you any of their art because everyone is completely naked and drowning in all their works. The same user who suggested this entry also noted that they are very much into this fetish and really enjoy it. So I decided to ask them what they enjoy about this particular fetish so much. To which they responded, quote, Well, I grew up by the ocean and it didn't really click until I found these old vintage pornographic images and videos of women pretending to drown. 
They were made by a company called Aquafan. That's what most people who uh, like this call themselves, which had people pretending to drown. Usually it's bondage and fetish like because of bikinis and stuff. A woman underwater seems more sexy to a lot of people. So what would happen if they met a grim fate? Well, you now have underwater peril. The Aquafan videos are hosted on a forum called Underwater Clip Source, which is where you can find a lot more information in the rabbit hole of the fetish, unquote. Now I could dive a lot deeper into this fetish, but I think you get the point. I will say that this fetish does seem to be connected deeply with just a morbid fascination with death and suffering, generally speaking. Since drowning is one of those things that isn't instant and looks extremely painful and stressful, it's hard to not feel as though these people kind of just get off to the idea of people dying in a slow, terrifying way in front of them. Which, speaking of, hanging fetish. This is a fetish that revolves around women hanging themselves with captions alluding to so And this comes in the form of both art and photographs. It's a disturbing rabbit hole that I really don't want to give much attention as it's full of extremely sick fucks and some content you definitely should avoid on DA in general. Once again, this is a fetish connected to death, which I cannot fathom or understand why anyone would get off to any of this. And frankly, I don't ever want to know. So, moving on. Bonus Entry Oni Gojira Kaiju, as suggested by Duncaster. And we have here yet another lol cow, with well over a decade of stupid activity and internet foolishness generally speaking to come over. It all apparently started back in 2003 on a site called RC2000's Godzilla Tribute, which on a random note is a site I kind of remember visiting as a kid, maybe at least once or twice, as I was really really truly obsessed with Godzilla and visited nearly every website involving him back in the day. While RC2000's Godzilla Tribute is no longer up, there is an old site called Godzilla Website Hall of Fame, which mentions it as, quote, I give it 5 out of 5 Godzillas. Our next inductee has done a super job creating a Godzilla site. He excels in originality and is currently working on a feature that I'm super excited about. Greg Graves runs a superb site that focuses on Godzilla and Angerus. He is a co-owner of the Angerus movement, implemented on my homepage. He's a cool guy and fun to talk with." Unquote. Not that it's extremely important, but I figure it's uh, nice to have a little bit of context about a site that you've probably never heard of. Something else that's also been archived, of course, is someone who personally had to deal with and witness the first major sighting of Oni Gojira Kaiju. That someone is user Ghostwalker, who also has a DA page, might I add, and is quite the excellent artist, that has had to deal with Oni Gojira, or his real name, Mark, for some time now, and notes, quote, It all started back in 2003. I was the admin of a small forum called RC2000's Godzilla Tribute, and there was this kid named Mark who posted nonsensical comments and reviewed stories with barely any coherence. And then I told him several times to stop it, and he started PMing me with lots and lots of spamming. And then he board stalked me, and then he did the same on Rodan's Roost and on Kaiju Galaxy. And then finally I told him, fuck off. And that's when he started acting like a dick wanting to make me miserable because I wouldn't praise him like the obsessive fanboy stalker he is. Yeah, that is what Mark is. He's an obsessive fanboy stalker with no life, one hand on his dick, jacking off to Freddy Krueger porn, and posting on one of my message boards about how much, like, Scorpius he is." Unquote. And Ghostwalker was apparently not alone, as Mark was generally considered a bit of an edgy annoyance to most who he encounters online, and he is well known for his wild ass rants like this one, quote, irritating bipolar people. Well, given my stepdad is one, Ghostwalker 2061 here on DeviantArt is one. They can go to hell. Who likes these freaks anyway? 
who like to threaten and verbally abuse others. In my opinion, these people are better off than they lick themselves. I wish they'd do that, smiley face. Nothing goes their way. They threaten the person nearest to them that is vulnerable. In my opinion, these freaks and people like them are better having never been born at all. Their incest parent should never have met and created them. Literally, in Ghost Walker 2061's case, she loves dear old daddy too much. Her dad abused her and yet she loves him. Does that not sound messed up or what? Same goes with my stepdad. His dad was abusive and yet he went to the asshole's deathbed. Yeah, my guess was right too. Take the dead guy's money, which he did. People like these two are bad examples of humanity. And in my opinion, since they are not family or friends, they can suffer in hell or raped by the devil. Who cares anyway about bipolar people? I don't. With their annoying behavior and mood swings, etc. Fuck them. I say lock them in a nuthouse forever and let them rot. Ghostwalker once said she was in one. She probably should have stayed in there and my stepdad should have never been born. Seriously, if asshole parents never wanted a kid or abused that kid, why did they meet or have kids to begin with? What a stupid, stupid thing to do. The end result is two assholes who are a pain in the ass, unquote. And again, this hatred and cyber-stalking of Ghost Walker caught many off guard as he kept this violent vendetta from a fucking old-ass Godzilla form alive and going over on DeviantArt for some time. How long is some time? Well, how about over 10 years? Again, 10 years of cyber-stalking and fucking molding and seething on DeviantArt all over a Godzilla fansite forum drama, as well as some stepdad related complex that he is for some reason placing onto this random person online. And they are far from the only other person who has been a victim of his never-ending spamming and stalker behavior, with users like Cindy, who actually has their own EB article, like Mark actually, and Eternal Mothra, the creator of the website Kaiju Galaxy, also being victims of his torment. Cindy had this to write about Mark. Quote, Oh God, Mark, I won't go into the past. I'll just tell you straight up what he did recently. He has utterly disgusted me in every possible way I can be disgusted by a person. This dude snapped. I mean, snapped. It happened over somebody on DeviantArt with legit autism who was making the same mistake that led to my ED page. I tried to warn her about it nicely. I don't want to see her get hurt by them the way I was. I know why they trolled me. I've taken measures to atone for and not repeat that behavior. Experience is a great teacher, and I knew she'd get hit hard if she continued. I replied to a thread she posted telling her why sites have ruled and that her behavior is coming off as a special snowflake. Mark got wind of it. He started attacking me in replies to the thread and blocked me so I couldn't respond directly to him. Then he wrote a short story with Freddy Krueger committing violent acts against me and he had it sent to me via note through a friend. Mark gloated that he knew I hate gore and hoped I liked his little story. Reading that story tells me he fantasizes about either doing this or seeing this happen to me. This disturbed me enough to not sleep well for a few nights, and I hope I never meet him in person at a con. I don't trust him to keep his hands off me. Just seeing his name anywhere makes me feel like throwing up." Unquote. Some more general info about Mark is he thinks that he is Freddy Krueger. He also thinks that he is like Scorpius. He'll often try to be an internet tough guy using intimidating roleplay style text and death threats. However, if you say anything negative to him, he will write you off as just another person who he doesn't have to listen to, whether you're a forum moderator or a random internet person calling him out for his stupid behavior. And as much as a evil, hard ass he likes to pretend he is, he is actually extremely sensitive and will break down at the slightest bit of resistance from anyone calling him out or making fun of him. The attention he also craves from something like an ED article, for example, 
He then goes on to whine about how people are bullying him. This being a clear case of someone who can dish it out, but certainly cannot take it. Oh, right, and I, uh, almost forgot to mention that he also has a fetish for reptiles and finds them sexually attractive. Quote, rubbing a raptor's slit here in her purr and growl while rocking her hips against my hand, eyes slutting shut, and at times yelping as she near. You know, crocodiles and humans did have sex together. I read a book on ancient Egyptian life, and the book even said such stuff was common for women to ride a male crocodile. I bet the crocodile didn't see the human as food, but a pleasure toy. Not to mention if she sucked him off, the reptile would find human anatomy most enticing, especially after that experience." Unquote. This is beyond one of the craziest and most disgusting things I have ever seen someone write. But uh, on top of all that, he has also made a ton of porn related to Godzilla and other kaijus having sex with humans. And it's uh, all very, very, very disturbing to see and obviously stuff that I cannot show you here on YouTube. I really could go on for quite a while longer as Mark's history online is quite storied and full of extreme stupidity and cringe. Maybe it's even worth a wandering the web someday. Who knows? But for now, I think that you more than get the point. Tim Box. For our final entry this tier, we have a very interesting rabbit hole of a user to search through. Tim Box or Tim Box 129 has been around for a very long time online and has some very interesting creative projects and history to see. To start, their profile says, No bullies allowed, please. And one of the newest posts on their page is about online bullying. Clearly showcasing that people have taken an interest in him and he has taken an interest in their interest likewise. If you come over his DeviantArt account, something that you'll be quick to notice is all these faux fan film projects. Like his latest one, Planet of the Toons, which he describes as, At the end of the 21st century, a great adventure will commence, and an epic battle of good versus evil will be joined, and help will come from the stars, all on a distant planet where cartoons are real. He's made a ton of posters for this and written quite long descriptions about the project, though as far as I'm aware, this is all just kind of mock-up, though he does speak about it like it's going to be a big ambitious animated film, but I guess this could also end up being a fan fiction, or more than likely, nothing at all. It definitely reminds me of the Pooh's Adventure Wiki though, which is a subject best saved for its own video, in a given due time. But the big collaboration aspect of this, and the whole fan-made movie posters part of it is very much in line with it. He's made a ton of these, but also he's made some fan art on two other accounts connected to him. Rugrats Kid 91 and 21 Jumbo Street, both of which feature a fair amount of Nicktoon related fan art. Now, Tim Box has been making fan projects for some time. In fact, as far as I'm aware, he's been doing it since, like, at least 2009, if not earlier than even that, with his past projects being Dexter's Odyssey, which is described as this epic series slash trilogy and in this poster is noted as a journey beyond your imagination, an epic battle between good and evil, a legend like you've never imagined, Dexter's Odyssey. Now, what's interesting is this guy has been working on this particular project since 2009. He has a YouTube channel by the name of Bob Their Buff, where back on July 4th of 2009, he made this video which consisted of giant fucking walls of text describing his plans for this Dexter series, which ended up later on being a trilogy consisting of Dexter's Odyssey, Mandark Strikes Back, and Daughter of Zen, which he describes as the following in this 2021 post. Quote, I was thinking that even if I do get Dexter's Odyssey made someday, especially with these 6,000 plus minutes of material, or far less than that, and even as a very ambitious mix of animation, both hand-drawn and CGI, special slash visual effects, both practical and digital, and live action, filmed in both widescreen and super high resolution 15 by 70 millimeter IMAX film, even with all that, 
I do think that my lifelong dream project, Dexter's Odyssey, based on but also inspired by everything I've seen, heard, and read about, and whatever catches my taste, interest and fancy growing up, Gendy Tarkovsky's Dexter's Laboratory and Craig McCracken's proper original classic Powerpuff Girls series, among them, could still be divided into three volumes or films, and certainly structured as some massive live-action slash animated epic film trilogy. Even with a hundred plus hours of cinematic material, are far less than that. In addition to the first volume, which could still be titled Dexter's Odyssey, there could be two other film volumes, in all planned live action slash animated Dexter's epic film trilogy, Mandark Strikes Back and Daughter of Zen. Now the first volume, Dexter's Odyssey, clock in at probably around 1,500 minutes of material, or maybe far less than that, could chronicle the unlikely epic journey of two reluctant souls, Dexter, voiced in the original run by Christine Cavanaugh, and in the newer run by Candy Milo, and his sister Dee Dee, voiced alternatively by Allison Moore and Kat Cassida from Gendy Tarkovsky's first popular cartoon show, Dexter's Laboratory. Now the second and probably longest volume, Mandark Strikes Back, clocking in at probably 3,000 plus minutes of material, or maybe far less than that could focus on the epic struggles between the free world at large by the Powerpuff Girls of Townsville, consisting of Blossom, their commander and leader, voiced by, okay, you fucking get the idea who they're voiced by, moving on, moving on, and the evil forces of Mandark, Dexter's rival neighbor and voiced by Eddie Deason. And finally, the third volume, The Daughter of Zen, clocking in at probably around 1,500 minutes of material. Or maybe, hear it with me, Far less than that. Could wrap things up with Dexter, Dee Dee, and the Powerpuff Girls themselves achieving ultimate victory against Mandark with the divine help of a beautiful woman named Zushi, the ashy like daughter of the shape shifting Mistress of Light, known to some fans of Gendy Tarkovsky's Samurai Jack as Zen, and a much better version of Gendy Tarkovsky's Samurai Jack Season 5's Ashi. In that, she will have all her mother's powers and be kind, caring, and as well as being divine. In other words, much like Samurai Jack's Season 5's lover Ashi, as she would have, could have, and should have been born good rather than being born evil like Aku's daughters. That's all, unquote. So, you know, it could be like 6,000 plus minutes of material, you know, pretty much the longest trilogy of films ever created, I would say. Um, you know, that's, that's definitely possible. Could be 6,000 plus minutes of, uh, animated material. Or, you know, far less than that, as in nothing at all. Now, that video from before and this post, by the way, are over 10 years apart. Timbox loves coming up with fan films and sort of pretending like they are going to eventually turn into a full-length or, like, Mega Goliath-length film and acts like he's constantly planning and working on stuff with it despite the only things he really has are basic descriptions of them and posters. Makes me wonder why he doesn't just try writing a fanfiction of all this stuff at this point. But, uh, whatever. Speaking of his YouTube channel, though, he also appears in a few videos from way back in the day, like 14 years ago. Like these, for example. And, oh, by the way, one more thing. I'll be coming back to school in a free year holdover pattern starting in August 2008 and ending in 2001 or 2020, you know? So... <laughs> well... Have a, as this, as, as, have a safe rest of the summer, you know? Bye! Well, you know... I think I better go now. Bye. Ah, what a beautiful day. Blue skies. White puppy cloud. Yeah. Hello, the name's Tomfrey Robert Mbox McKenzie. And I gotta take you to McDonald's to go wear on the lamp. You know? So let's start with either the landfill or go well. You know? 
And I really think good well. I think I'll uh, start with the landfill or Goodwill first. Okay? Okay. And oddly enough, he also has these videos on this channel where he uh, talks and coos with this Asian child character from Dexter's Laboratory, which is uh, a bit unnerving to say the least. Hi there, Lily, my love. Hi, Lily. What you doing? I love you, Lily. I love you, Lily. <laughs> yeah. Among his many creative endeavors, he's also written articles on retro junk, like his My 12 Favorite Gendy Tarkovsky Characters article, which in case you haven't noticed, he really loves those. Or the Whoop Ass Beginnings to Powerpuff Girls article. Now the thing is, people began A-logging this guy a little bit after a while due to him being an eccentric character and others began trolling him outright. And he definitely hasn't taken too well to this. Notably, anything connected to the Kiwi Farms thread on him. Quote, to jackass tracker of Kiwi Farms, you always talking about me getting my ultimate comeuppance for things that I'd rather not do in real life. Please knock it off, jackass tracker, and please keep my name and my personal business out of your mouth and just leave me alone. I really beg it this time, from now on, I'd rather keep my ideas and concepts private until I am ready to get them realized in some way, shape, or form someday, and that in the future our hearts and even our understandings will meet again with love and generosity. Thank you." Now being fair to Tim Box, as far as I'm aware, he's mostly just been making these fucking like fan film posters that never end up going anywhere. And besides the kind of like weird obsession with that Dexter girl, I, I mean, the guy just kind of makes shit and he's mostly completely harmless just doing his own thing. Cringy, perhaps. Over obsessive with uh, cartoon characters, definitely. Maybe a little weird, a little bit creepy at times. Yeah, I would definitely say so, but I certainly wouldn't call him a threat to anybody. I could go on a little while longer, but at the end of the day, Tim Box is pretty much just the guy who likes to LARP that he's going to make a big animated film and stuff. He likes talking about 90s cartoons and movies, particularly the stuff made by Genny Tarkovsky. And while he's certainly eccentric, I say, just let him cook. Even if what he's cooking is a bunch of invisible chicken wings, at the very least, he's probably having some fun making them. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen, for part 5 of the Deviant Art Iceberg. I hope you all enjoyed this part, and, well, we only got one part left now, and that last part actually has very few entries on it. And so, what I was thinking is, this last part, I already started taking suggestions from you guys and people on my Discord, over entries to include, a bunch of bonus entries, and I would like this last part of the Deviant Art Iceberg to be as full as possible. So, with that in mind, if you happen to ha know of any interesting Deviant Art people, or Deviant Art related drama, or subcultures, anything like that that hasn't been covered already or is already on that iceberg, then please feel free to either um, message me via Twitter or Instagram, or you can even join the Discord server and there is a channel specifically for suggesting new entries. You can also comment down below, but I would really, really appreciate it if you could provide 
either a link or some extra information about the subject so that I'm not going in completely blind into it. And if you do that, I will of course credit you in the finale of this iceberg. I also want to take this opportunity to thank all of my loyal patrons and channel members for their continued support of this channel and me in general, including all of my night eggs and night owlets, as well as a very special thank you to all of my great night owls, including Tyler the Leper, Sharif, Channel 11, Hexmaniac Hannah, Tony Teramaya, Icy Dice, Ho Hot, and Medusa's Hex, as well as a super duper very special thank you to all of my Arch Owls, including the Fearless Forgotten Ace, the Super Saiyan Sword, the other Super Saiyan Star Punch Gaming, the Savory Salt, the Wise Nicodemus, the very talented Cherry NGT, and the Good Chi Vibe Zen Garden Party. Thank you all for watching this video and for your continued support of this channel. I look forward to seeing what entries some of you might have in mind for the finale in part six. But until next time, this has been Dylan the Night Owl, flying off.